Is YouTube. the problem the recommendation? Because That's, I, I, yeah. I don't mind that people have ridiculous ideas about Hollow Earth because I think it's humorous. But I'm also a 53 year old man. Right. Right. I'm not. I'm not a 12 year old boy with a limited education that is like, oh my God, the government's lying to us. There's lizard people that live under the earth. Right. But if that's the, the real argument about these conspiracy theories is that they can influence young people or the easily impressionable or, or people that maybe don't have a sophisticated sense of vetting out bullshit. Right. Well, and the algorithms aren't making a distinction between who is just laughing at it right. and who is deeply vulnerable to it. Exactly. And generally, it's just, it's, it just says who's vulnerable to it. Because another example, I, the way I think about this is if you're driving down the highway and, and you know, there's Facebook and Google trying to figure out, like, what should I give you based on what tends to keep your attention? If you look at a car crash and everybody driving down the highway, they look at the car crash. According right. to Facebook and Google, it's like the whole world wants car crashes. We just, just feed them car crashes after car crashes mm. after car crashes. And what the algorithms do, as Guillaume Chaslow in the film says, who's the YouTube uh, whistleblower uh, for the YouTube recommendation system, is they find the perfect little rabbit hole for you that it knows will keep you there for five hours. And mm. the conspiracy theory, like dark corners of YouTube, were the, the dark corners that tends to keep people there for five hours. And so you have to realize that we're now something like 10 years in to this vast psychology experiment where it's been, you know, in every language, in hundreds of countries, right, in, every, in hundreds of languages, it's been steering people towards the crazy town. When I say crazy town, I think of, you know, imagine there's a spectrum on YouTube and there's on one side you have like the calm Walter Cronkite, Carl Sagan, you know, slow, you know, kind of boring, but like educational material or something. And on the other side of the spectrum, you have, you know, the craziest stuff you can find. Um, crazy town. No matter where you start, you could start in Walter Cronkite or you could start in crazy town. But if I'm YouTube and I want you to watch more, am I going to steer you towards the calm stuff or am I going to steer you more towards crazy town? Crazy town. Always more towards crazy town. So then you imagine just tilting the floor of humanity just by like three degrees, right? And then you just step back and you let society run its course. As Jaron Lanier says in the film, if you just tilt society by one degree, two degrees, that's the whole world. That's, the, that's what everyone is thinking and believing. And so... If you look at the at the degree to which people are deep into rabbit hole conspiracy thinking right now, and again, I want to acknowledge COINTELPRO, Operation Mockingbird, we, like there's a, a lot of real stuff, right? So right. I'm, I'm not categorically dismissing it, but we're asking, what is the basis upon which we're believing the things we are about the world? And increasingly, that's that's based on technology, and we can get into you know what's going on in Portland. Well, the only way I know that is I'm looking at my social media feed and according to that it looks like the entire city's on fire and it's a war zone. But if you I called a friend there the other day and he said oh, it's a beautiful day there's there's actually no violence anywhere near where I am. It's just like these two blocks or something like that. Right. And and this is the thing is warping our view of reality. And and I think that's what really for me the social dilemma was really trying to accomplish as a film and you know the director Jeff Orlowski was trying to accomplish is, is how did this society get go crazy everywhere all at once, you know, seemingly, you know, this, this didn't happen by accident, happened by design of this business model. When did the business model get implemented? Like, when did they start using these algorithms to recommend things? Because initially, YouTube was just a series of videos, and it didn't have that recommended Correct. section. When was that? You know, that's a good question. I mean, I... Um, you know, they originally YouTube was just post a video and you can get people to, you know, right. uh, go to that URL and send it around. Uh, they needed to figure out, w once the competition for attention got more intense, they needed to, to, to figure out how am I going to keep you there? And so recommending those videos on the right hand side, I think that was there pretty early, if I remember actually, uh, because that's that was sort of the innovation is like keeping people within this YouTube wormhole. And once people were in the YouTube wormhole constantly seeing videos, that was what the, they could they could get, offer the promise to a new video uploader. Hey, if you post it here, you're going to get way more views than if you post it on Vimeo, right? And that's that's the thing. If I open up TikTok right now on my phone, do you have TikTok on your phone? Um, <laughs> well, I'm not supposed to, obviously, but more for research purposes. Ah, uh, um, research. <laughs> do you know um, how to TikTok at all? No. I, okay. I my don't. 12 year old's obsessed. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. She can't even sit around. If she's standing still for f five minutes, she just starts like. <laughs> She starts TikToking. And that's the thing. I mean, 2012. They have, 2012. Oh, so the Mayans were right. 
Right. <laughs> 2012, the platform announced an update to the discovery system uh, designed to identify the videos people actually want to watch by prioritizing videos that hold attention throughout, as well as increasing the amount of time a user spends on the platform overall. YouTube, YouTube could assure advertisers that it was providing a valuable, high-quality experience for people. Yeah. So um, that that's beginning of the end. Yeah. So 2012 on YouTube's timeline, I mean, um, you know, the... Twitter and Facebook world, I think, introduces the retweet and reshare buttons in the 2009 to 2010 kind of time period. So you end up with this world where the things that we're most paying attention to are based on algorithms choosing for us. And so the sort of deeper argument that's in the film that I'm not sure everyone picks up on is these technology systems have taken control of human choice. They've taken control of humanity because they're controlling the information that all of us are getting. Right. Think about every election. Like, um, I think of Facebook as kind of a voting machine, but it's a sort of indirect voting machine because it controls the information for four years that your entire, entire society is getting. And then everyone votes based on that information. Now, you could say, well, hold on, radio and television were there and were partisan before that. But actually, TV, um, radio and TV are often getting their news stories from Twitter. And Twitter is, rec is recommending things based on these algorithms. So mm. when you control the information that an entire population is getting, you're controlling their choices. I mean, literally in military theory, if I want to screw up your military, I want to control the information that it's getting. I want to confuse the enemy. And that information funnel is the very thing that's been corrupted. And it's like the Flint water supply for our minds. 